Hey guys, this is Nick from ForexNoobs.com with some daily analysis. In this analysis, I'm going to be going through each and every pair in my list and I'm going to be looking at each and every time frame for that pair. I say this pretty much at the start of uh, every one of these analysis videos, but there are new people who watch this analysis every day. So I should go over it each time. Basically, the whole point of this analysis is to look for price action setups across multiple time frames on every pair. I go through this process anywhere between three to six times per day, sometimes more, sometimes less. It's not exact, just depending on how much time I have in the day. This process pretty much ensures that I don't miss any trades. Well, I shouldn't say any trades ever, but I very rarely miss a trade. Let's say, for example, I go through this process eight times in one day. It's a bit extreme, but let's say I do. Now, if I do it eight times in one day, then I should catch almost every trade that forms on the three hour chart. The reason for this is because there's eight three hour candles in a day, so I'll be looking at every single three hour candle. Um, now, realistically, eight times a day is probably a little much. Um, you know, most of us probably can't be bothered to do that. And a lot of us just don't have the time to do that. I know that I usually don't have the time to to look eight times per day. But, you know, six times per day, possible. Uh, four times per day is also possible. So if I were to do this four times per day, I wouldn't miss any trades on the six hour chart because there's four six hour candles in a day. So all the six hour charts for all the pairs I trade, I'd see every candle forming and I would know when a trade's coming up. So this process pretty much ensures that I don't miss out on, on trades very often and that I can keep track of price action across pretty much every pair I trade. And um, well, I'm gonna actually start the process and then I'll explain a few more things. So, it's actually very, very simple. Pick a pair, the first pair at the top of your list, go through each and every time frame, and look if there's any price action setups. Uh, GPUSD. Now, even if there isn't, like right now, GPUSD is sitting right in the middle here. So for me, I want to see, you know, indecision forming on a support or resistance area. So I know with price sitting right in the middle here, even on the daily chart, it's very unlikely that there's going to be any potential for a setup here. But I still go through it anyway, because it's all about having that process. It's all about following your process and doing it day in, day out, and just getting into the routine of it. Yeah, so no setups here on GPUSD. Oh, well. Um, another thing that I just should mention real quick, because I always get asked this question. Do I trade five-hour charts, seven-hour charts, nine-hour charts? No. I don't trade those. You don't need to trade those. Um, I only really have these time frames up here because it splits price action up a little bit differently and it gives me a better idea of what price is doing. So this just helps me analyze price action a little better. The only time frames I actually trade are the three hour, four hour, six hour, eight hour, 12 hour, and the daily. Those are the time frames I trade. The other ones are there just for, you know, analysis, just helps me analyze stuff. Um, all right, so nothing happening really on GPUSD. USD CAD, uh, we have a trade here that's, uh, some people took this one in the forum. I didn't take it just because of the ADP non-farm employment coming out today. Um, I just, I'm not a big fan of that report. It's not as big as the actual NFP, but I have seen it move price a tremendous amount and I just, Really didn't feel safe going into this trade. And also, on top of that, there was a... Uh, where is it? Oh, Wednesday. Here it is. Uh, trade balance from CAD. And it, like generally speaking, I do not worry about trade balance reports. They're not a big issue for me. But when I looked at that trade, right, I saw this coming. ADP, non-farm employment change. And that was like, oh... Yeah, I probably don't want to enter before this report because it can move price a lot. But, you know, I might still enter because it's not one of the major ones I usually don't, uh, I usually avoid. Um, but then, this was coming out 15 minutes later, the trade balance for both US and CAD, and it was a USD CAD trade. And I was like, all this grouped within 15 minutes? 
and I'm entering this trade a few hours before all of that. And then, you know, we got a speech. Speeches are always, always scary. Um, and that's coming just an hour and a half later. I was thinking, Ugh, no, I'm probably not going to take the trade. Uh, but generally speaking, I wouldn't usually be too bothered about trade balance reports, even though they're read on Forex Factory. Um, trading the higher time frames, like eight hour or twelve hour, it doesn't really bother me. These are these kinds of reports. It's just because everything was kind of coming together, and because the reports were specifically related to each of those pairs, so USD and CAD, it just kind of made me want to avoid this trade. Might have been a bad decision because it looks like it's going pretty well, but you know. You have to live with your decisions in Forex. Uh, let's just see how it's forming. There's nothing really tradable here right now in terms of, like, I can't get into a trade anymore. But like I said, I still go through the process and go through each and every time frame. Ooh, how you do USD on the daily? It looks interesting. I'm not sure if that would be tradable, but interesting. Well, we'll start with the free hour. I usually start with the lowest time frame and work my way up. Yeah, nothing much going on. 12 hours somewhat interesting. It's a little bit above the support area or the resistance area in this case. I'm not sure if that would, yeah, I'm not. I know, I, I'll, I'm going to keep an eye on this one and see what it forms like on the daily. It'll be hard to trade because of that upper wick. The stop loss is just going to be enormous. Um, but I'll keep an eye on it regardless. Just see what happens to it. But yeah, unlikely that I'm going to trade this. But it is still worth watching. New Zealand USD. Let's take a quick look there. What's going on? Ugh, it's not loading. Sometimes it does this. Yeah, nothing much here. Use the JPY uh, actually been one of my favorite pairs recently. Funnily enough, because I I started trading Forex. I can't remember when it was. But it was pretty much 10 years ago, let's say. So... 10 years ago, 2005, I pretty much hated trading USDJPY and I barely ever took trades on USDJPY for nine and a half years. And the last few months, last maybe six months, let's say, um, maybe even less than that, I've all of a sudden started liking USDJPY. It's a pretty decent pair at the moment. Um, it has changed a lot though. I mean, I'm not sure if we can see it properly on the weekly. You can kind of see it, just the size of the of the of the moves. It's kind of moving a lot more than it used to. If you look at the weekly candles, a lot of them are much much smaller with the exception of these. It's probably not the best example, but my point is the average daily range of USDJPY has gone up. Uh, before it was a very, very slow moving pair. And now it seems to have gone up a little bit, which makes it a little bit more interesting to trade. Uh, I've been really liking USDJPY. So let's see if there's anything forming on here. No, nah, nothing really. Um, it is approaching this resistance area, so I will be keeping an eye on it. Um, you know, price is approaching this resistance area, so if it smashes into this resistance area, looks like buyers are in complete control. If we see a slowdown here, if we see some indecision, uh, candles forming here, so that's like what a lot of people refer to as reversal candles, pin bars, stuff like that. If I see any signs that price is undecided when it hits this area, 
I will be looking to take a short. I mean, this is a pretty strong resistance area. We've seen a bounce there, a bounce there. Pretty strong resistance area. So I am going to be keeping a close eye on this one and we'll see how it goes. Um, that is three consecutive days of very, very bullish candles. So yeah, if price does stall here, that would be a very strong sign that sellers are taking control of price. And as long as they prove to me that they've taken control of price, I will be probably entering a short. Like I said, this is one of the better pairs that I've been trading recently. And this is a strong resistance area. So keep a close eye on this one. We've done New Zealand USD. GPAUD is another great pair. Let's uh, see what we can see on this one. Three, four. Ah, it's a bit too late to enter this. I didn't check my charts uh, this morning. This has uh, been slightly busy day, so this is one of the days where I haven't checked the my charts as much as I would like. And see what I mean? Indecision formed, but it formed on the four hour because I wasn't checking often enough. I didn't really see this forming. Hmm. Ah, well, what can you do? Uh, it may have been tradable. It may have been a decent trade. I mean, it is. it does seem to be pushing up and working out. Uh, I would guess just by looking at it that the risk to reward ratio would be perfectly fine. Yeah, even here it's two to one. And that's only halfway between the two support resistance areas, but... You know, you could easily have a three to one target with this trade. Even if you're more generous with the stop. And uh, you got in a bit late, which I don't really recommend. You could have almost three to one target or actually three to one. So yeah, this does look like it has a lot of potential, but it's a, it's a bit late for the entry. So um, it, it's way too late for the entry. So I'm not gonna get into this at all. Um, Oh well. Nothing much going on on the higher time frames for this. Keep an eye on it, just in case uh, you know someone entered or something. Then uh, I'll keep it at the top of my list. I just want to see how the trade plays out, really. Uh, EuroJPY. Let's see what's going on here. Today's analysis is not ter terribly exciting. There's not that much happening. I mean, this is kind of normal for NFP week, though. NFP week tends to be a, a little slow leading up to NFP. Um, for those who don't know who what NFP is, uh, it's the non-farm employment change. Uh, it used to be called non-farm non something. Non-farm payrolls, that was it. And... Uh, I still refer to it as NFP because I was calling it NFP for like eight, nine years. And I just can't get used to the new name. But yeah, the non-farm employment change is pretty much the biggest impact report in Forex. GUP, JPY looks like it could have some informing on a higher time frame. Maybe. Maybe, yes. Yes, it looks like we have something here. Daily, eight hour. Yeah, okay, I can work with this. All right, so this daily candle is gonna close at the end of the day, obviously, because it's a daily candle. And yeah, that is some pretty solid indecision after a very strong preceding trend. So strong preceding trend, indecision forming right on top of a resistance area. So what does this tell, tell us? It tells us buyers had control of price, buyers hit a massive resistance area, and buyers are losing control of price. If the candle closes like this, 
then it would be a clear sign that buyers are losing control of price. I would then be looking for some further confirmation to enter. Um, no real point going through all of that in the analysis that's uh, covered in the strategy itself, which there's a link to below and it's a free strategy. So check that out if you want to understand better how I trade. Uh, this is a good resistance area. Similar setup here. Not sure if this was tradable because it was end of week, it looks like, because of that uh, that gap there. But um, regardless, it was a very clear bounce from this level. So we're probably, possibly, not probably, possibly going to see a repeat of this bounce. And it might actually give us a pretty decent trade. So I'm glad we actually found something. I don't really like doing this analysis and not finding any potential setup. Um, now, will I trade this? I'm not really sure. It's going to be the first day before NFP. NFP is on Friday. So this trade is going to trigger, if it does trigger, it is going to trigger on either the Thursday or the Friday. The Friday, I don't take trades. NFP Friday, I just stay out. I've been doing that for pretty much six, seven, eight years. So I just don't want to be in a daily trade on NFP Friday. Thursday... I try to close out my trades on the Thursday before NFP Friday. So opening a daily trade will be a little risky tomorrow, but I might do it. We'll just see how it plays out. I'll I'll probably update the the analysis on the blog if I decide to take this trade uh, tomorrow. And if it's not triggered by tomorrow's analysis, then we'll talk about it in tomorrow's analysis. But this is definitely one you want to keep an eye on. And depending on your trading rules, you might be okay trading on NFP Friday. And then you can jump into this trade. A few people, I'm sure, are going to ask, um, why does NFP Friday matter? It's a news, it's a US news report, and this is GUP, JPY. US shouldn't affect it, but it does because it's a cross pair. Uh, GUP, JPY is calculated by GUP, USD times USD, JPY. So the rate of GUP, USD multiplied by the rate of USD, JPY equals GUP, JPY. So it is massively affected by US news reports. Pretty much all pairs are affected by new US news reports. So NFP Friday can move this a lot. Um, so it is a legitimate concern, but we'll just see how this one plays out. Uh, this is definitely the best looking setup that I've found so far today. Uh, let's take a quick look at some other pairs. This analysis is going on for a, a little while longer than I thought it would. Not for much on USDCHF. These are pairs down here. They're pairs I don't really trade that often. And like in the forum, a lot of people ask me, oh Nick, can you check this out? Can you check that out? So I'll open up pairs and uh, I'll take a look at, at price action there for someone. But yeah, I'm not really gonna do analysis on these pairs. Uh, they're not really pairs I commonly trade. I mean, EuroGBP, I, I will take a trade or two on here, but not very commonly. And there's nothing that looks nearly as good as a GUP, JPY setup, so there's no actual setup here anyway. So yeah, nothing. I'm not going to bother with EuroAUD AUD New Zealand. So things to look out for in the coming day. GUP, JPY, awesome trade setup. This could also possibly be taken on the eight hour. Probably not gonna take it on the eight hour, but I'm gonna keep an eye on it on the eight hour too. So uh, watch it on there. You might wanna trade it on there. 12 hour for some reason, just the way the candles form doesn't look that good, but it might look good on your 12 hour chart. Um, but honestly, I, I'm probably not gonna be trading on the 12 hour, eight hour. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna stick to the daily. Wanna see how this candle closes and make my decision based on that. Uh, AUDUSD is something I'm keeping an eye on, but really doubt that this would be tradable. I mean, that long upper wick there would just make it pretty much impossible to get a good risk to reward ratio. Because your target, you're going to want it around about here, or at least your first target, you're going to want it around about here. But probably your whole target, because that was a pretty strong bounce. You know, this bounce here was pretty strong. And it's likely when price comes back down here, it's going to bounce from there or at least get stuck there for a while. So your stop loss is going to have to be above the wick, which is there. 
your target is going to have to be here. That's 1.2, 1.3 risk reward. Um, I don't know. Doesn't really feel like this trade is worth the risk. Uh, probably won't trade it, but I'll keep an eye on it. And uh, USDJPY is another one to keep an eye on in case price hits up here and forms indecision. So, yeah, main ones to watch out for, GPJPY, we have something nice forming here. And USDJPY, we might potentially get something nice forming here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this analysis. If you have any questions, ask them below, not in the YouTube channel, please. Ask them in the blog post below. Also, hit the like button on YouTube. It kind of helps a lot. If you just hit the like button, say you like the analysis. Um, I think it's like a little thumbs up button. That would uh, help me out a lot. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys around the sun.